Good evening, folks. It is April 24th, 2015. And good lord. Good lord. I've been in a busy week in the world of collectibles and figures. And you're welcome to watch me, Sucks at Games, for our weekly broadcast of Go Over Such lovely, lovely little things to throw on our shelves or in our pockets or wherever we could put said collectibles. For folks who don't know what this is all about, I am a person who enjoys collecting things. I've been a big collector since good god. 90s? 2000? 90s? Late 90s maybe? No, 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 mid 90s. I'll probably say mid 90s. But nevertheless, I am a big fan collector. I am very passionate. Well, I wouldn't say I'm passionate more, I guess I'm more like filthy casual, if you will. Nevertheless, the thing is, I want to share my love of collecting with you, the viewers. And of course, welcome to you. What's if the uh, I'm sorry, Esol D-Man Lurkers. Uh, what if I wasn't buying awesome figures? Oh, that's what's a comment. <laughs> oh, that's where the, yeah, the game comment. Yeah, Figure hoarder, I am not a hoarder. Because I do take them out of the boxes. Now I do put them on display. I am not that kind of person who's like, oh, they have to stay in the box because I don't want them to ruin their collector's value. No, 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 no. They are meant to be taken out of the box, and they are meant to be put on display. And action figures are meant to be posed in different ways, give them a little freshness. Anyways, guess I'm saying that. Anyway, nevertheless, anyway, nevertheless, here are my two favorite words to go to. Can we just jump into it, guys? Because I have a lot to talk about. It's probably going to take us maybe a good hour or so. We'll see how quickly we bust through this here. So, let's jump into it. And hey, Lay! Like last week, we're starting off with something for the ladies! And some guys. So this right here is based on the browser game Tolkien Rambu, consisting of sexy men. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in um, a browser game with nothing but sexy, sexy, hot... Uh, Bishonen, Tolkien Rambu, you probably want to check that out. Uh, trip up, uh, Max Factor here, they have a lovely little preview prototype of the Foxy Kogitsune Maru. Now, this is uh, taking the form of the in uh, his in-game artwork, so if you actually look at the in-game artwork for this character, you'll see that he's actually posed just like this. So, Nothing says sexy like a solid gray figure. I know, I know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes though when it gets color. I'll say it does look to be like a rather impressive figure uh, with the style of the clothing, the attachments, the hair. I mean, if you really, if, you know, if you really take a good gander at this figure, it's actually looks, it looks pretty decent in the uh, the prototype stages. Um, now, the thing is, the way things most prototypes work, and we're actually we're gonna talk about this later in the broadcast. Is they look they look absolutely wonderful when they're unpainted, but then once the paint application is thrown on there, sometimes some things are lost. Whether it be detail, whether it be you know it, it um, brings attention to something that isn't really um, was noticeable before. But uh, it, it looks nice so far. Now the thing I have to wonder though, the thing I have to wonder about this lovely lovely gentleman here is the outfit right there. Based on his bio, he claims to not have a small body. So if we were to look underneath... Hmm... Hmm... Well, I'll, I'll let those who are decided to buy this figure out. The research, you know, exactly um, how not small he is. <laughs> yeah, Tolkien Rabu. And that's exactly what we're talking about, Rue. And we've just finished talking about him. <laughs> so let's go and jump on to our next one here. What's up next? Next up... Oh, dear lord. Oh, dear lord. Alright, Persona fans, this one's for you, this one's for you. Uh, so Good Smile Company recently did a live broadcast showcasing uh, even more upcoming products because good god, this company just cannot be stopped. They are they are a beast when it comes to releases. It doesn't help the fact they have like what, five, six different companies underneath, you know, um, underneath them, we're all, all together. But, uh, yeah, so they they they, they um they had a little live broadcast. Obviously, this one here is going to tickle your fancy. Uh, coming from Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, your star Persona 4, and pretty much almost, pretty much amount, he's like seems to become the image, the mascot of Persona. 
if, I feel like to me. And it comes from uh, becomes the action figure of Yu Nakamura. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of hard to see because uh, this was taken from a live broadcast, so these are nothing more than screenshots from the from the live stream. But we can definitely tell based on this photos here. He's going to come with a card, of course. He has his glasses, but of course, and oops, <laughs> and he's got his glasses blade there, and uh, just for a little humor. Just for a little humor. There we go. I guess give him the suplex. Now, as a Figma figure, uh, I, you know, one of these the action figures, it will definitely uh, include various hands, facial expressions, and gosh knows what else once it does finally get released. But there you go. You, Nakamura. You brought his last name for, uh, from Skype. <laughs> suplex! Suplex City, bitch! Okay, when catch that reference. By the way, I, I, forgot to remind, I forgot to remind you folks that uh, Sunday's broadcast is going to be an afternoon broadcast because I forgot there's a wrestling pay per view on Sunday. So, oops! I'll, I'll, I'll keep reminding you folks throughout the broadcast. But yeah, so there you go. You persona fans, go nuts. Knock yourselves out. Now, here's the thing. Alright, is it you, why you, you, or is it why you? Because I had my head shoot off by some anime fans. Regarding the fact that I did not include two U's. Or well, I mean, I, I included two U's. How many fans, guys? Oh, my God. How many fans are scary? Where'd my mouse at? Mouse. Oh. Here we go. All right, so what's we got here? So, uh, we got a little bit of celebrity action going on here. So, Max Factory has always been trying to do different things with the Figma releases. You know, they do anime, games, comics, movies fine arts of all things and they've done some celebrities uh, but their celebrities in the past kind of been uh, the action figure type well, hadn't really been of the action figure type they've been just you know celebrities um, so here is one way in which you can define action in the Figma world that right here folks we are looking at Figma Bruce Lee now granted I mean also I would have been more of a uh, Chuck Norris person or Walker Texas Ranger but, you know, Bruce Lee, you know, Bruce Lee, yeah, 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 he's had his place in, um, Celebrity World, <laughs> movies, he's done a thing or two, so I've heard. Uh, sadly, there's not really much about, um, about this figure, I mean, we know he's gonna come with some nunchucks, but, I mean, hey, if, you know, if you're looking for a Bruce Lee action figure, and you're not really, you know, having the kind of money to pay for the more expensive detail types, they're like usually about maybe like 10, 12 inches tall. Here's a nice option for you. It's you in the official English game. Yeah, that's, that's funny. I got my head chewed off for that. Because technically, if you look at the Japanese spelling of you, it's 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 elongated on the ooh. But, you know, whatever. What do I know? What do I know? <laughs> is it good about Japan's version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. Language is interpreted in different ways, but, you know, that's based on my schooling. Speaking of school, speaking of school, guys, uh, I grew up... During school, I grew up on a certain series known as Dragon Ball Z. And, whoa! What is this? What is this? Not saying this is what I want, so... Um, I would say you must be able to fighting games that keep Dragon Ball Z alive because you cannot, you just cannot keep this series down. So I mean, most of the fighting games, you know, it must be, you know, maybe because of Dragon Ball Kai, or new characters, they've had it. Or hey, how about that new movie, Resurrection F? So, you know, time for Bandai to uh, think of all the goods related to this new movie, you know, f featuring that shorty baddie. Okay, I'm talking about Freezer, Freezer right here, not 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 VG. VG is, VG is kind of short, but I, I think Freezer is actually uh, a little shorter. But yeah, so I can see he's back and he's got himself a new coat of paint. Really, he just he just, he just dip in a, a bath of gold and boom, he's now more powerful, or something. I don't know. But so we got uh, we got uh, oh god, Golden Freezer here, Frieza, Frieza. Take your pick. That's part of the action figure series of the uh, SH Figure Arts line. 
Now granted, now that uh, Frieza is actually much stronger, what's Goku gonna do? How's he gonna pass an all-new powerful, you know, past foe? Obviously, obviously he's gonna do it by gaining a new Super Saiyan level. Because that's that's just obviously the way you go, the way you go. It's like he's like he leveled up, he grind it. It's like all right, sweet, new bad villain. Just hit the fields, kill a few other baddies, boom, level up. And that is what he's done here with the most ridiculous, ridiculous name ever. Oh, hold on, no, listen to this, listen to this, hold on. This is the SH Figure Arts, the action figure series. Saiyan God. I'm sorry, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Son Goku. Here, let me pop down for you. Let me pop down for you. Right there. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Son Goku. I'll let that sink in for a bit. I'll just let that sink in. Now, interestingly, is... There's really... Much special about this. It's, it's just, it's, it's another repaint job. It's like, okay, all right, well, here, we'll dip your, we'll dip your hair. Make it a nice little, uh, nice blue here. And there you go, you got a brand new action figure. <laughs> Honestly, to me, it seems, it seems, it seems a little cheap. It seems a little cheap, but, you know, hey, if that, you know, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, there you go. You got Goku here. Here he is, look, Shorty. Look at Shorty. Look at Shorty right here. See, Goku, Goku's like, oh, oh, god, if I only can punch down, if I can only punch down, he's like, mm, nut punch, nut punch, nut punch. <laughs> so, both these figures are going, oh, I forgot to mention it. So, yeah, both these figures are going to be available in October 2015. Uh, Goku stands about 6.3 inches tall. Frieza here stands about 4.33 inches tall. Both we retail for 4,536 yen, and if you're if you don't want to import from Japan, just keep an eye out for uh, Bandai. Check out the Tamashi dot net, I think it is. I think Tamashi dot yeah. Or Bluefin. Check out Bluefin uh, for distribution of this of these two figures in um, the United States. Now we're gonna move on to something that I just cannot seem to escape. Guys, look, I'm not doing this on purpose. I, I assure you, I am not doing this on purpose, but, you know, it just gives me another reason to talk about it. <sighs> let's, just about, let's just talk about how much more amazing Digimon is over Pokemon. I always say, should we, just go for, should we go for another round of this? No, no, we won't. We won't. We won't. But let's go and talk about what's, you know, what Mega House is releasing right here, and... They have actually released uh, very several uh, individual characters now of, of the Digimon cast. Uh, let's see what they've done. Yamato, Taichi, uh, Joe, Sora. I can't remember the other characters, but they've actually released quite a few of the actual uh, cast members. And the, each each one comes with, with one their um with their Digimon. That which they can do um, some kind of action with. They can hold on to it. You know, or maybe someone be on their shoulder. But what Mega House is also going to be doing is they're going to release the Digimon, the Digimon themselves individually outside of the actual full figure releases. They also include different poses as well. So it's going to be uh, two different sets. It's going to be the Digi Collection, and it's going to be two sets. The first set's going to be out in August, and it's going to include Agumon, as you see back there, Patamon, Palmon, and Gobomon. It's kind of hard to tell right here. This picture is very small because they, good, or sorry, Max, or who is this? Mega House. <laughs> Mega House here. That's about all you're going to get. about all you're going to get for in terms of preview. But yeah, so they got the first set coming out in August. And then later they're going to have a set that will include uh, Gabumon, Gatumon, Biomon, and Tentamon. So if you're, not in, if you're not interested in the actual human characters of the Digimon series, you can always, you can always keep an eye out for the... Uh, uh, just Digimon themselves, so that is an option for you. No details on release, no. So, yeah, so other than just, it's, we know set one's gonna be out in August. So keep an eye out for that. All right, so let's see. We got um, we got manly battles. We have cute little Digimon monsters, and now we have cute sea idols. 
So Bandai here has revealed their next SA Trigger Art series from the Idol. No, no, from Love Live. Oh god, I'm gonna get shot by. I'm gonna get shot by Love Live fans. Oh god. It's like, how dare you confuse it with Idol Master? It's an Idol series. What do you want? Alright. The worst part is, you know, I've actually. Uh, I've kept my eye on um, certain characters. So I should know better. I should know better. So taking the stage now, the fifth in the series and the other half to a Nico Yaoza comes Maki Nishikino. And just like uh, just like Idol Master, there is usually that one girl that catches my eye, and in this case for Love Light, it just happens to be Miss Maki here. And based on the number of releases for this character uh, that are not super deformed, this release from Bandai happens to be the one, one of the better looking ones so far that catches my eye. Yeah, I, I, I'll usually say it's actually better than Alter's swimsuit version of Maki, which actually when I looked at it, I was like, oh, zzzz. <laughs> of course, you're probably thinking, you guys are probably like, idols, zzzz. Uh, But I, I'll say the different facial expressions she includes are all, they're cute. And for a small fear, the hair actually looks pretty decent. You know, I do, I do have um, some SH figure arts um, collect uh, myself, and I, actually, it's not a bad series. It's not a bad series at all. And I will say the uh, for an outfit, the auto outfit, it isn't really that harsh on the eyes. Because normally auto outfits make me just go, "Oh God, what are you wearing? It's awful looking. You look ridiculous." So, uh, Bandai's version of Maki may be the version that I end up buying. Mm, I kind of did with uh, Bandai's Noel Vermilion from Blaze Blue. I mean, you, you can take what you get, because honestly, uh, SH Figure Arts Noel. No, sorry, it's D Arts. D Arts Noel. It's actually probably one of the more decent uh, Noels out there. But that's it, you take what you can get, so, yeah, alright. So, uh, Pirates are uh, for SH Figure Arts Maki Shikino. Will open on May 1st and it does have a September release if you are interested in purchasing this idol here. Alright, let's move on to some pre orders and god dang it, guys, we just cannot get away from it! We just can't get away! Oh, hey, look, it's Maki again. Hi! Hi! <laughs> so, a good smile company here. Um, they happen to have their own uh, monkey release coming. This time it's Good Smiles. Super deformed in the Roid series. Their version of Maki here. Same outfit, different faces, and tiny. There really isn't much I can say about uh, the Nindroid series. I mean, the Nindroid series, you know, it, it's they're super deformed figures. You, you've, you've seen one, you've practically seen them all. But hey, you know, if you've heard of the Isles of Love Live and them to be chibi form, here you go. I will say Bandai's release has better facial expressions compared to uh, what the Nindroid here has. But you know, if you're an Nindroid collector or collector of Love Live Nindroids at least, uh, you do get a bonus if you actually. Here he is right here. You can actually get a bonus of a special pattern base right here, along with a small and large extension part if you choose to pre order from the Good Small online shop. Otherwise, you can go and check it out from other different retailers. Information underneath the video player for those who are visiting the broadcast here on Twitch. Uh, currently, she's going to be retailing for 3,241 yen, about 4 inches tall. It will be released in August of this year. Looks like a mix of an idol and school outfit. Yeah. With suspenders and a giant bow and a swanky top hat. <laughs> you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with a hat, guys. You can never go wrong with a hat. Alright, so the next uh, release we're going to talk about here it, it might be sort of familiar if you happen to play uh, Tatsunoku vs. Capcom at the arcades or on the Nintendo Wii. So as part of the 40th anniversary of Time Bokan, based on the title of Yoruno Yaruman, comes the 9-year-old protagonist of the anime, the Ronjo, or also better known as Leopard, 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 mispronounced. <laughs> So it's a one of some skill figure, and there there seems something really off about the the quality of this figure. Just something something seems off. Now I'm not sure if it's just because of the lighting of the photography. It could be it. 
you know, probably the lighting was done in such a manner to show the reflective surface of her outfit. That's the only thing I can really think of. Like here, you can see the reflection on it. It really is something that really catches my fancy um, <laughs> for reasons. <laughs> for very, very specific reasons. And honestly, you know, I was never really a fan of the original outfit from the Otter Man of this character, the adult version. You know, this, this version does, has a little extra uh, things here and there, but, you know, it's it's, <laughs> it, it's it's a little girl wearing this outfit. It's like, uh, okay, sure, but I mean, I did say she was nine-year-old. Yes, she is a nine-year-old protagonist in this series. But I mean, you know, if that tickles your fancies and you're actually a fan of the series, of these anime, there you go. Uh, this will be available in July 2015, but I... At 12,500 yen retail price, 12,500 yen for one seven scale figure, guys. Uh, I say take your money, go spend it elsewhere. I wouldn't say it's worth it. Oh god! All right, so speaking of things that look awful, guys. Speaking of things that look awful. Ah. <sighs> How about another disappointment looking at uh, Shinon from Sora Online 2? Because honestly, there's not enough figures of her, right? Even even Shinon here, her expression, she's like, she's so unhappy. It's like, oh, I'm a crappy figure. <laughs> that she's just happy about the pose, focusing on her butt. That might be it too. Or maybe you know, a mix. I don't know. But this definitely is this is uh, coming from a newcomer uh, under the Good Smile banner. And for their entry into this market. Uh, for the figure market? No, <laughs> wait, it's a Suna 2.0! <laughs> uh, if it's a newcomer in the market, it isn't really an impressive one to start off with. Especially, you know, when the fact that, you know, this has been done... That she has been done time and time again. And far much better, and far more interesting by others. The funny part is, funny part is I'm surprised Good Smile has, a. Uh, this under their banner, and this another Shinon figure coming, when Aquamarine has another one underneath the Good Smile banner, and mu is much much better looking. My ad, same price. They probably want the same price for this one versus the one by Aquamarine. So I mean, if you are looking, if you're, if you're looking for a Shinon figure, I advise uh, skip skip this one. Check out the one from Aquamarine, especially especially for the. 19, I'm sorry, that's wrong, for the 12,000, 12,000 yen price tag. But, you know, I mean, if, if you want all the Shinons in the world, then, you know, here you go, this is an option. About 8 inches tall, will be available in August 2015. Now, let's get away from this, and let's, let's look at something a little more amazing, because, you know, Alter, Alter, I, I praise Alter left and right, because they know, they know how to do uh, amazing figures. Hell, they even got me um, interested in, you know, figures and characters that I, for times I don't even watch or play. I can't say I want this one, though, uh, but it's, it's, it, this is certainly one to behold, right here. Coming from Valkyria Chronicles 2 is the massive... Oh, I, I forgot to pronounce her name. I'll up too. I even looked up her name, how to pronounce it. Alice? Oh man. I, 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 note to self. Note to self in the future when you're writing your notes. Boom Princesses, how to pronounce their name. <laughs> I, I have not played Valkyrie Chronicles 2. I know absolutely nothing about it. <laughs> Excuse the cats, but nope. <laughs> what about this one? You can say yes to this one. We'll see. Right, so I, I completely forgot about this figure, honestly. Um, I'm not sure how I forgot about this figure, because I remember when I looked at it. The first thought that came to my mind, the first thought that came to my mind was, she's not a banana peel. It's like, whoop! <laughs> Can you guys hear the sound effect now in your ear? Look, 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 look at the action, look at her legs, the way they're, you know, flipping her mouth open. It's like, whoa! Joking aside, joking aside, where do I begin on this one? Where do I begin? Should we talk about the rock structure base that sits on top of another base? Maybe the hair that looks you know, like the waving many heads of a hydra. What about that spiraling whip? Good lord, now that is something. Or <laughs> look at those spiked shoes. 
Or maybe the Tales of her outfit. I mean, there there are so many things we could talk about. How about the wide smile? That she has depth to it. You know, the lily features her face. We could talk about the, we could talk about all those things. We can talk about all those things in great detail. Or or we can talk about how the hell her body is twisting like that. Zoom in here. Zoom in a little more. Seriously, look at that torso. Look at that torso right now. Look at look at look at her top. Look at her bust. Look at her waist. Look at her bust. Look at her waist. How is her chest bending like that when the lower body is twisting the opposite direction? This bothers me. I can't stop looking at it though. Now that I see, I can't stop looking. This this has to be maybe the camera angle or the way you know her top separates from her bottom because the you know, the outfit. I don't know. Can't say, but it just there's something off about her body. And I can't stop looking, and it bothers me. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, it's an extraordinary figure. It looks amazing outside of that, that one little part. <laughs> can't unsee. You like the coattails? Yeah. So yeah, it, it looks extraordinary. It's just... I, I really would like to see a upper view of her body. So I can see the angles. Like, how is her body twisting like that? Vogue, welcome to you. Shake the body. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There, there's no shaking around here. Unless you're playing Mischief Makers. Like, who, yeah, it's about video game that I actually know things about. And let's jump back into the SH Figure Arts series once again. Bandai is just, you know, churning out the figures, you know, and, and technically they're also churning out the repaints. <laughs> oh, wait, you know, actually, well, 10 of the other ones didn't really work. You know, they were different. They had some things different about them. But this one, this one is actually a repaint. And this is coming from the Super Mario series. Notice the lack of brothers in the name. The Super Mario series. Not the Super Mario Brothers. I mean, poor Luigi. Poor, poor Luigi. Continuing. <laughs> poor green guy. From the Super Mario series comes Fire Mario. And despite being a repaint, I will, he, he's, he's back as a meat. Up on down here. We'll show you, look at this. Look at this boy. Look at what he's got. Look at what he's got right here. So this version of Mario is going to include a fire flower. Is he right there? Nice little fire flower. A fireball that's in his hand, ready to launch. Or you can just you know, let the fireball let loose. Boom! There you go. Obviously, I've always been a sucker of the um, Fire Mario Luigi color scheme since my fondness of Super Mario World. So looking at this brings back some memories, and there's there's some interest there. There's some interest there for me. So I mean, if you're in the market for a Mario action figure, but you want something different than typical Mario, you know, check this one out. Uh, one thing also is really nifty. Oh, there he goes. Throwing the fireball. One thing is that there is right there. One thing is really actually really nifty is the fact that Bandai actually has also various play sets available. So you can add a little extra to these figures here. You know, fire flower. Hey! It, it's it's a him. It's a Mario. He, he's, he needs a little, little more definition in that butt, though. <laughs> See, even he agrees. like, yeah, I do! <laughs> the movie is his year ended yet. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the basement with you, Luigi. Mario, Mario, <laughs> Luigi, Mario. Don't you ever bring that up ever again, D Man. Don't you ever bring the Mario movie up ever again. Now, I, I, what I'll say is one thing that's really nifty is about Bandai is the fact they do have, you know, um. Shoot, what's the one looking for? Official. They have official distributors in the United States. So, I mean, if you're looking for a Bandai product and you don't want to import it, you know, you can. There are going to be several, several several local distributors available which you can purchase uh, these figures from. Alright, so Mario's got some action going on and we're going to talk about some more action figures, some bigger ones, and this is going to be coming from the uh, Real Action Figures line uh, by Medicom Toy, and there's quite a few that I'm going to talk about so I'm going to try to be as quick, as brief as I can about these guys. So let's get into it. Boom! First one. Can yeah, I zoom in? I zoom in. Oh, there it is. Zoom. <laughs> there we go. Alright. So, Medicon has another Saber on the way. And this is a RAH, Real Action Heroes, Saber Extra. From, well, from Fane Extra! I'm mm. gonna say, where's my son? The, the Saber is going to include the uh, Aestus Estus. Estus Flask? No, no Estus Flask. She will also actually include a Rose. 
three different faces. Boom, right there. You know, dead pan expression. <laughs> Mario's in my price range! <laughs> More my waifu. I will say, favorite extra. She's cool. She's cool, but yeah. She isn't waifu material. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. She got offended by that comment. Sorry. 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 Don't be mad at me. Okay, alright. She's, she's cool. She's happy now. She's happy now. <laughs> well, yeah, so that, yeah, so um, she has the different faces here. Um, but check out, check out the back here. She's got the plumber, the plumber crack, uh, plumber crack window. Let's say that five times fast. Plumber crack window, and yeah, as as pointed out, as pointed out, she has a little uh, a little oomph, a little extra oomph up front. Though I'm sure that's not why she's called Saber Extra. And I'm sure that joke's been done a thousand times over, but you know what? I don't care. I don't care. You know, I think it's the first time I said it. Maybe. Possibly. Probably not. So I, I, I would do a lot of comments. One thing that's really nice about the uh, the Real Action Heroes set of figures is the fact that their clothing. That their clothing is actually of cloth material. So when you do purchase these, you're going to get something that's, well, like a doll. <laughs> but action figures instead. Because they're totally not dolls. She has an epic bra on. I'm trying to see where. <laughs> I'm trying to see where. All right. Well, she has one. We'll go with that. We'll run with that. Now this is gonna be something a little different. This is gonna be something, but it's, it's sort of on topic. So we've had the Batman vs Superman trailer just recently released, and it only seems appropriate in the timing that uh, Medicom would have to have their own Batman and Superman RAH figures coming out. Just not exactly the universes you would expect. So first up here, we have <clears throat> excuse me, from Flashpoint, the Flashpoint crossover, and Batman Night of Vengeance comes the Thomas Wayne version of Batman. Uh, this is certainly a meaner, meaner looking Batman. Zoom, zoom in here. Let's get a look at that face. Oh, he's got he's got the stubble like me too. So definitely a meaner, scarier looking Batman. And if you actually read anything about the comic book series, uh, yeah, that mean that mean look goes with the storyline, so it's rather appropriate. Sadly, I didn't I did not know anything, I don't know anything about the sword, based on my little quick up looking up the research on this. But it's, it's it's oh sorry, it's one of those alternate series you know Batman titles. So if you happen to be a Batman fan, if you happen to be a fan of this uh, of Flashpoint, here you go. Here's Batman for your collection. Now the next one up, next one up here is a <laughs> is a Superman version that's a, it's, a little, it's also a very little different. It's a little different, very different. So this is coming from a uh, Superman Red Sun miniseries. Uh, if you obviously could not have guessed from the outfit that he's wearing right here, this is a Superman as if he grew up in the Soviet Union during the Cold War. So obviously he's like, er, evil, evil, uh, Soviet-powered Superman. Not much to say regarding the outfit. Not much to really say about the outfit, honestly. You know, the, co the colors seem to be appropriate for the time, and, uh, the, um, where it's coming from, where it's based on, you know, being the, from the USSR. Uh, as you can see, he's got the sickle and hammer, as it is, has his emblem now, obviously. Not really original, but, you know, obviously. And he's got one sweet belt. Honestly, honestly, it's already one of the better looking Superman outfits. <laughs> yeah, despite, despite the whole uh, USSR Soviet Union thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's from Mother Russia, exactly. So I mean, it's two cool. You know, two swanky things for uh, for collectors out there. If you're you're a comic book fan, you know, be sure to check it out. Medicom Toys. Uh, I do forgot to mention the price tags here. Both of these are gonna be twenty thousand yen a piece. Both about 12 inches tall, and both will be available in December 2015. So if you want them both, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. And speaking of pretty pennies, speaking of pretty pennies, this one right here, guys. I have to ask you, I do have to wonder, guys. Have you ever wanted to get yourselves the ultimate Woody? Medicom Toy has the solution for you. It's going to cost you quite a bit, but, you know, if you want that ultimate Woody. Here you go. Sucks. That was a bad joke. I know it was. Thank you. That's what I'm all about right here. It's all about the lame jokes. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's an action figure. It is. 
Is essentially the star uh, that's taking, you know, it's kind of pushing Buzz out of the way. It's Woody. It's Woody from Toy Story. Uh, and what time, though, it's the funny part is what time is the fact that there's a new movie coming out, which just announced. And also, it's the 20th anniversary. So, there you go. And, uh, hey, howdy. Howdy. Howdy, Woody. Now, the thing is, it's really interesting. This is actually not like the other uh, RH figures released. The ones we talked about, those are 12 inches tall. No, there's a reason why this is called Ultimate Woody, because this guy actually stands about 4 inches taller. It's probably one of the tallest um, releases so far from Medicom. So it's essentially 15 inches. 15 inches tall. And yes, that's correct. That's correct, because here's why. Here's why. What I saying, he, he's much bigger. He includes interchangeable faces, of course. Boom, right there. Happy face. Oh, sorry. Hey! Come on, don't you want to buy him? Don't, don't make him sad. Don't make him sad. Oh, look what you did, D-Man. D-Man, look what you did, Woody. So sad now. He's like, oh my god, it's so expensive. <laughs> yeah, so since it's ultimate, it's 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 rather pricey. But yeah, the, the thing is that really is interesting about this. That's compared to the other ones, is his eyes. That's actually what makes this one different from all those. Is his eyes are actually adjustable. And also he has the he has the interchangeable faces as well. And he's just much bigger. But yeah, forty-five thousand yen. Or four hundred and fifty dollars. Fifteen inches tall will be available in December two thousand fifteen as well, but this is kind of for more yeah, this is more of the um true toy story collector out there. Casual collectors, um you probably want to look at something a little smaller in size. A little something probably be more your budget. Now let's move on to a figure that actually has caught my interest since the prototype stage. This right here, yep. Boarding, boarding, here we go. So from the adult visual novel turned on me, Wakure Romans, Shoujo Kichi Monogatari, comes Vertex Stunning, one-seventh scale, Celia Kumani Ain Tree. Now, I will say I am a sucker for many things, actually. I'm a sucker for many things. <laughs> but I am definitely a sucker for Our Lady in Armor. And I've been very interested in this release since um, since the prototype stages. But I've had my concerns. I've had my concerns, you know, once it got painted, what's going to be lost? What's going to be... what's going to kill my interest for it? And so now that she's, she's actually available for pre-order right now, and she, has, she still has my interest for the most part, she still has my interest for the most part. Is your <laughs> that lance though? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that's that's gotta be uh, that's gotta be uh, spending several parts to throw into the box. But it's easier. The interest is sort of there, it's still sort of there, but you know, you've got the detail in the armor, you got the you got the trim, the etchings, the various pieces as well. Really look do amazing. Lordine, Lordine. Do so you like this? Just I, I love the armor. I love the armor so much. And the, the hair, I do love the hair. The um twirling tails, the flowing hair, absolutely looks it just looks wonderful. I love it. But <laughs> but come back up here. Come back up here. See this one. Alright, gotta complain about this. Gotta complain about this. This is a common thing that I find very obnoxious of figures. Especially because it's always gonna be the ladies that are doing this. What is with the bending of the leg? Why? It looks awkwardly twisted. It should. Her, with the way her thigh is coming down and her leg twisting. Why? Do you do that? It really irritates me. Why is that considered cute? Why is that considered a thing? Why is that considered something that makes you go, Oh, that's so adorable. It's not. I look at it and go, No, the leg should not be bending like that. A leg should not bend like that. Someone who is standing around, who is posing, is not going to be naturally doing that. Stop it. Stop it. That's complaint number one. Complaint number... Ooh, hey, man. Actually, it's super quick. See, the thing is, you... Oh, God, I got that issue right there, and then you got this. 
Look at this armor! Look at this armor! Holy shit! Bending their limbs and the best way to get a leg up on the combat. Oh, God, in the <laughs> But, and to the end, it's the armor, the etchings, the patterns, the trim, the pieces. It's just, oh my God. And, and, and I guess the bust, you know, player. Yeah, oops. But I mean, even like you're right, just on the side of the armor, you can see like the, you know, the, um, the, the rivets. You want to call I, I don't know what you would call those. With the way the pieces come together. Just mm, extraordinary. But then we come to this. This is what bothers me right here. The other thing that bothers me besides the league. <laughs> hey, Colleen. Bye, Colleen. <laughs> the face. This, this bothers me. Alright. This is actually being a common thing between of all the, um, the Celia re releases. I don't know why I'm doing it because the artwork I know looks different. The artwork looks different. Not that I looked. I looked. I totally looked. Can they not please give more shape to the lips? It's like she's sucking in her lip and it's like, mm, okay, I'm not going to show my, all my lip. I'm going to suck in my cheeks here. Give a little more shape. Come on, come on. Just the mouth spreads all the way to the lip because, like, the, the lips don't do that. The lips don't do that. Could you not just, you know, Make him, ah, uh, <laughs> can't find the words for it. It, it. it looks so tiny. It looks so tiny. And I can't stop looking at it. Just like the leg, I know it's there and it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Because the thing is, I like this character. I like it when she's thrown in her armor. I, I, you know, you know, I mean, there's some other figures that kind of got my attention, but anyway. <clears throat> but again, I'm a, I'm a sucker for lady in armor. I, I like her design. I like her hair. I like the armor. But then there's just those things like that, just like, uh, ruins it for me. Absolutely ruins it for me. He also ruins it for me. 18,000 yen. Granted, this figure is 17 scale, it's about 10 inches tall. She has the long, long lance with her as well. But I'm just not sure. I'm not sure if I want to throw, in the cow throw down the cash for that. Okay, I do love the armor though. God, God, that armor. <laughs> uh, so she'll be available on October 2015th. Um, just uh, one of those I'm, I'm unsure. No, actually, no. I, thin legs. No, I hate thin legs. <laughs> Can't stand thin legs. I do have armor fetish. <laughs> I do have armor fetish. Uh, but you know, it, but you know, if you folks, if you guys are not armor thing, I do want to point out that this is an adult figure. The armor does come off. So, if you're interested, knock yourselves out. Not, not going to judge, not going to judge, and hopefully you guys will not judge me on the next topic of hand here. <laughs> so we just talked about we talked about Love Live earlier, Idol series. Uh, but you know, and there's other series. I say Cecilia, there, you know, eh, probably gonna be a large bust for me. Ha! See what I did there? See what I did there? But I would say at least this 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 release I know at least has turned out great, and it's one I've been gushing over for quite some time. If you follow me, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, you know what I've just been recently gushing about. Finally, finally, a for pre-order comes Fat Company's sixth release. This one being Makoto Kikuchi in their one eighth scale Idol Master figures based on the Blu-ray DVD jacket illustrations. Get ready for a mouthful, guys. Get ready for a mouthful. Oh, wait, no, okay, no zoom. Oh, okay, oh, it's gonna resize. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> I don't know why, I'll say, I don't know what it is about me, but I always seem to gravitate toward the tomboy characters. Don't know why, don't know how, but I just seem to do. I will say, though, I actually have watched the Isle Master. I was going through a bit of insomnia. I was like, oh god, what do I do? I'm just gonna lay in bed, not gonna do anything. It's like, well, Idol Master's on Crunchyroll. I guess I'll watch it, see what these characters are all about. You know, because I kind of like these character designs, but I know nothing about their personality. So I, up, I did end up watching Idol Master, and uh, I will say I do find Makoto's character to be very likable. And I always thought this illustration of was something you know I really did enjoy. But the funny part is this illustration that's based off of. It, I always thought she was just laying down. 
but uh, according to the figure here, uh, I was completely wrong. Apparently, she's actually jumping through the air in the very most unusual of manners. <laughs> I'm not sure if you would jump like that. I guess maybe soda commercials. Um, oh, or maybe the end of t old television shows where they freeze frame. Maybe that. Maybe maybe that's what she's doing. She's like, oh, it's the end of the TV show. Freeze frame. Perhaps that's it. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain because it's actually one of the best looking figure releases of Makoto. And it's also not in a blasted idol outfit because Idol Master has some really, really awful outfits. Can't stand them. Cannot stand their outfits. The the idol outfits. So it's pretty cool. I do like the fact that, you know, um, that this series does exist. This, this set of uh, series of figures from Fat Company. And I just, I love the amount of detail that went to this figure. I'm gonna try to get zoom in here. Zoom on the birdie. No, 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 no body zoom. No body zoom. All right, we'll talk about it from here then. <laughs> so I say they got the tag on her shirt. You got the local print on her jacket. The watch that she wears. The pocket and edges on her backpack. Familiar, right there. I'm not sure you guys can see that, but you got that detail going for her. The belt, the shorts on the front. It's just, you know, there's just, there, I feel like there's just so much I went into this, and uh, it's just, I, I'm, I'm happy to see it. And uh, I cannot deny the fact that, you know, I do enjoy a bit of a belly flash. I mean, who doesn't? Though it does make me think of Turns of Tennis. All those belly flashes. All those, all those stomachs showing the guys. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, I, th I think I said too much. So, yeah, uh, Makoto, Makoto, let's go about Makoto here real quick. Uh, so uh, Mako's hair, you know, it's looking a bit wild as it moves in her motion, and it looks wonderful from the front and the back. I will say, though, with the amount of detail that's going into this, one thing that does concern me is, you know, there might be some loss in detail, you know, on her jacket, the shorts, and everything else, everywhere else. The smile, though. She does have a trim around her smile. And I'm afraid once that goes into mass production, that, co that kind of detail is going to be lost. So crossing my fingers here, crossing my fingers here. That they do a good job on that. Also, I do have one complaint though, and once again, <sighs> the leg. Japan, stop! Just come on, stop it, Japan! Please, I'm begging you, stop the weird leg twisting thing. Other than that, I mean, I'm happy with that. I mean, I, I, I got my pre-order in. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get this one. It's right up there with the uh, the other release of uh, Miki Hoshi, who's also looking absolutely wonderful. And it's just, it's always a nice change of pace, figures like these. Especially with idol figures, when they're in casual clothes and they're not in their stupid, horrendous looking idol outfits. And that is that. That's all the figures we're going to talk about. It's all the uh, stuff that's coming out, you know, the previews, the current pre orders, all available. I forgot to go over the details of all these. I will get into a rhythm, guys. I will get into a rhythm of this one day. But yeah, Makoto here is going to be for 8,400 yen. It'll be available in uh, December 2015. About 9 inches tall. So be sure to check it out. Again, all available for pre-order. I will post the links on the YouTube video underneath the, you know, the details. You'll find all the links there at that time. But we're not done yet! I have one more thing I want to talk about. If you haven't been listening, there's a certain there's there was a certain there's certain songs I've been playing right now from a game that was just released on Steam, finally coming out of the uh, early access, and one that's absolutely amazing, absolutely wonderful, coming from the <clears throat> amazing Danny, Bar Danny Baranowski. Crypt of the Necro Dancer soundtrack is now available. I've been waiting for this. I've been watching play. I've been watching people play um, the open access. Or early access version of Crypt of the Necrodancer. And I was like, oh my god, this soundtrack! This soundtrack is absolutely amazing! But you couldn't buy it unless you got early access. Bought the early access version of the game. And I didn't want to buy the game because I suck at rhythm games. I enjoy watching it. I, the, the game is actually an amazing style of a rhythm based roguelike dungeon crawler. Where the idea is you gotta keep to the you gotta keep to the rhythm. You gotta keep to the rhythm of um of the music, or else you'll take damage. And you guys can't, you know, follow understand enemy patterns. They move your beat, they move to the beat, you move the beat, and you gotta figure out, you know, how to properly attack them. 
Oh, I'll get the, I'll get, I'll get the, um, that in just a minute, D-Man. Wait, so this is currently not available. I've been, I've been down for the soundtrack because I knew once the game was released, the soundtrack would be released. And I will say one thing that's pretty awesome, I did not expect this, and I was very surprised about this, was on the soundtrack, it features Family Jewels. If you guys have not heard Family Jewels, I've done, I play a lot of his re game remixes on the broadcast. Well, he's actually lent, lent his guitar abilities to the soundtrack of a uh, uh, Nick Dancer. So it's like you got Danny B, you got Family Jewels, I'm like, oh my god. The soundtrack is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> Even more so amazing. So if you're interested in that, guys, uh, again, I'll post a link in the YouTube video you know, for if you're interested in finding the soundtrack for that. Or you can just go go to a band camp, look up Danny Baranowski, or just look up Crypt Necrodancer OST. Check it out. Or you can also get the soundtrack with the game if you do buy the game on Steam. I absolutely love Danny B. I absolutely love Family Jewels. So, absolutely awesome stuff. And that is going to wrap it up for this week's figure news, guys. As I as I thought, about one hour. I have a lot to talk about. A, a absolutely lot to talk about. So, for folks who don't know, we do this every Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, before we jump into our game. For those who are watching YouTube, we actually watch us live, twitch.tv slash sucks at games. Right there. So make sure to bring your wallet and be ready to spin, spin, spin. Because I will try to get you guys to spend money on this wonderful, wonderful passion of mine. And with that, we're going to jump into our game. We're going to jump into some more Dark Souls 2 after I take a break. And D-Man, Easel, what are you guys talking about? I will talk about that. I will talk about that as soon as I get back. So, uh, for those watching YouTube, I will see you guys next Friday. For you guys in the chat right now, I'll see you guys in just a few minutes.